and pray that this time will be an enriching time in your life that the Lord himself will speak to your heart you'll never be the same again talk to the Lord in prayer remember we're here for unlimited riches remember you're here for hidden treasures in Christ and the Lord wants to reveal to you how you can have and how you can keep those hidden riches hidden treasures unlimited blessings in your life I want to show us the way a way that leads to those riches the path that leads to the treasure that God has provided provided in Christ Remember, this is a special, special retreat for you. And you want the Lord to make it number one, unforgettable. And as the Lord shows you and shows me and shows us the way to get into this rich experience that the Lord himself will so help you to present your heart, your life, your skill, your ability, everything you've got, present it and offer it to the Lord. And that's your offering, your, your gift, your ability and your skill will be acceptable in the hands of the Lord. And when it is acceptable to visit you a tremendous blessing, great blessing, untold blessing. Pray that as God is blessing you here, He also be blessing. All our brothers and sisters in all other locations where we are gathered. If the Lord Jesus has offered himself and has given the totality of everything he had for your blessing, for you to have inheritance in heaven, then we need to reciprocate and offer him our lives, everything we've got in appreciation in gratitude to what he has done that's part of our thanksgiving it's part of our praising the lord as we offer what we have who we are unto the lord in return for what he has given unto us.
In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said. Tonight is going to be a wonderful night. It's going to be a glorious night. And whatever it is you have not got yet. The Lord is coming your way tonight. In Jesus name. The Lord will surprise you. And then you'll be so surprised, your joy will have no limit. You will shout the praises of God in Jesus' name. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this hour. This is the moment you have been waiting for. That will show us the way. That will get right into your presence. And then those hidden riches. Those unlimited treasures you are going to give to everyone in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, in every life there will be no lack. There will be no limitation. And all that we have lost, you get your everything back to us in Jesus' name. Abundance of blessing. Sufficiency in your blessing. Satisfaction with blessing you give to everyone in Jesus' name. Bless your people here tonight. And all those who are gathered with us in all the other locations where we're transmitting the message unto them. Oh Lord, I pray you open the windows of heaven and pour your riches upon everyone in Jesus' name. Bless everyone tonight. Keep us awake, Lord. We remember what children in the children camp pour your blessings on them. Our youths in the youth camp everywhere pour your blessing on them too. As you are blessing us here, bless everyone everywhere in every place. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know what I discovered about deeper life? When they are happy, they clap their hands. When they are not happy, they keep quiet. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I just wanted to hear your response. You can sit down in the blessing of God. We're looking at the message tonight. Consecration and absolute surrender. You know when people hear that, the first thing they think about you see, this is tall. This is difficult. You know why? Because they're thinking about something else. They're thinking of maybe a soldier that commits himself to the security and protection of his country. And they're thinking of consecration and absolute surrender. And they think it's like a soldier that commits everything that he has. And then his life is at stake. Not exactly like that. Yes, there is a part of the commitment of the soldier that talks about the consecration and the absolute surrender. But the Lord wants us to think about the why with the husband because of the love and the affection that she submits and she gives, and she commits, and she consecrates her life to the care and to the welfare of the husband. And then because she knows that the husband is going to give everything he possesses, going to bring everything and lay everything before her. Christ is like that. He wants to lay everything before you. All that heaven has, all that God has, all that Jesus Christ provided on the cross of Calvary. Everything that will give you joy and happiness and satisfaction. He wants to provide for the sufficiency of your life. And then as a result of that, you are so appreciative and you are so grateful. You say, Lord, because of what you have done. And because of what you're doing, and because of what you will continue to do, I lay everything before you. You know, the wife doesn't feel like a soldier going to the battlefield 
and it doesn't feel like a soldier that is saying, I consecrate, I commit, I give absolute surrender to the captain of the army. The wife feels different. That's the way the Lord wants the church to view and to see consecration and absolute surrender. I'm reading from Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. You see the foundation of everything we're talking about in consecration is about mercy. By the mercies of God. The mercy that got us saved. The mercy that cancelled our condemnation. The mercy that removed our guilt. The mercy that reconciled us with God on the basis of that mercy. On the basis of that favor. On the basis of that grace. On the basis of the goodness of God. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. By the favors of God. By the grace of God, by the goodness of God, which is flowing in your life, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice, not an injured sacrifice, and not a decaying sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, from the time we are young, especially those of us who are born in nominal Christian homes, we say we're going to the service. We go into the service. Our understanding of service is a Sunday, Sunday affair. And then when Sunday comes, we say, today is the day for our service. And then we didn't think, I never thought when I was young, that Monday through Saturday, we're still going to be offering our service to the Lord. But now the Lord is reminding us that this is not a Sunday, Sunday affair. It's for all our lives. If you're a brother, if you're a sister, if you're a child of God, if you're a member of the family of God, it says, this is your reasonable service. That means then, there is unreasonable service. Unreasonable service. A service that has no reason for offering age. When somebody doesn't know the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, God, the salvation of God, the reconciliation we have with God. He doesn't have a reason to offer a service to the Lord and therefore a service that has no reason is unreasonable. But when somebody says, I praise the Lord, I'm saved. I praise the Lord, I'm born again. I praise the Lord for His grace, His goodness, His favor, His mercy unmerited. Then he has a reason, he has a reason to come and offer a service unto the Lord. And you can tell, you can tell, you can tell the difference between somebody that has a reason for offering a service to the Lord and the person that doesn't have a reason for serving the Lord. The one who is born again has a reason. The one whose hope is in heaven, he has a reason. The one who has his name in the book of life, he has his reason. And because of that, he comes to offer a reasonable service unto the Lord. And be not conformed unto this world. Be not conformed unto this world. What do you say there? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You will know it and you will prove it. And this blessing of consecration and absolute surrender will be yours in Jesus' name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, limbless and acceptable sacrifice to the Lord blameless and 
acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. If the service is going to be acceptable, if the consecration is going to be acceptable, if the surrender is going to be acceptable, if the activity is going to be acceptable, it must be blameless. You cannot come and offer something to the Lord that has been eaten by worms and termites. You cannot come and offer something to the Lord that is decaying and defiled. If it's going to be accepted by the Lord, it will be blameless. Point number one, blameless and acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. Number two, blessed and absolute surrender to the Lord. You know, when you're thinking about the blessings of God, it's like you think about a river. In fact, Ezekiel 47 uses that language. You get to the shore. And you don't know too much about the blessings of God when you are at the shore. And then you are, you are treading carefully, cautiously at the shore of the river. And the river gets to your ankle. Then you go on and it gets to your knee. And then it gets to your waist. And then when you move on into the very depths of the sea. And you abandon yourself into the sea. And you give yourself into the sea. And you give an absolute surrender into the ocean of God's love. That's when you know the real blessing of the Lord. It covers you from without and it overwhelms you from within. The blessed and the absolute surrender to the Lord. Number three, biblical and approved service to the Lord. Biblical. If it is not scriptural, not biblical, it's not going to be approved of the Lord. A person cannot just come and say, I'm offering this to the Lord. We must ask the question, is it biblical? Is it scriptural? Is it ordained of God in the scriptures? Only then will it be approved unto the Lord. Number one, blameless an acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Let's come back to that Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present, what? What's it? Tell me out loud. Your bodies, you present, your bodies unto the Lord and it says as a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service it talks about our body here and it says we'll present that body unto the Lord you know there are some people that they never 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 think about that that's our body for the mouth and the eyes and the brain and the hands and the legs, every part of our body actually belongs to the Lord. All the training, all the skill, all the experience, all the learning that you have acquired, everything is deposited into your brain, into your body. And it says now, because of what Christ has done for you and what he has done for me, that we are to come before the Lord and present our bodies unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. And then it says it must be holy to be acceptable unto the Lord. And this will be our reasonable service. I want you to follow through on this blamelessness without blemish without spot without wrinkle without any defilement if we're going to offer it acceptably unto the Lord Leviticus chapter 22 Leviticus chapter 22 verse 20 but whatsoever has a blemish that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. Can you see that? A 
as you come as we talk about consecration and we talk about absolute surrender the lord is telling us number one examine what you want to offer evaluate what you want to offer look very closely and critically and scrutinize what you want to offer unto the lord and then it says if you find any blemish there clean it up first purify it first punch yourself first if you're going to offer something to the lord and it's going to be acceptable unto him it must not have any blemish look at verse 21 and whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offering unto the lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beefs or sheep it shall be perfect to be accepted there will be no blemish there, no blame there, no reproach there, no defilement there, no dirt there, no idolatry there, no evil there, no sin there. It says, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Verse 25, neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your god of any of these because their corruption is in them that brings in another understanding that even when the offering is all right when the offering appears to be perfect if the person bringing it is a stranger to the kingdom of god a stranger to the grace of God, a stranger to the righteousness we have in Christ. He said, we must not accept that because their corruption is in them. The corruption, the defilement is not even in the offering now. But their defilement, their corruption is inside them and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. Isn't that the reason why the first thing a sinner will do? Instead of saying, I want to come and offer this, I want to come and offer that. The very first thing is that you will clean up your life. You come before the Lord and you will lay your life on the altar and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me. I want you to save me. And you know, sometimes uh, when, you know, we have some people that come to our church and uh, they see our wonderful orchestra and beautiful choir. They see them playing and singing. And it appears that these, some of these people, they have been trained in music. They have done all the exams, theory and practical. And when they see what we're doing, they say, I can, I can do better than this. I can do better than this. And they may come to offer themselves. And they may come to say, Pastor, you know, I have been in music all my life. I know this. I know this. I know that. And I can help in your choir. Thank you very much. We appreciate what you want to offer. You know, if we didn't have the Bible, and if I were to take a decision just by myself, without thinking of the Bible, I'll say, come on board. I'll say, this is wonderful. I'll say, we've been waiting for a person like you. But you know, we cannot do that here in our church. You must first of all get on the altar of salvation. And then you give your life unto the Lord. And as you give your life unto the Lord, you are born again. You're a real child of God. And you're living in accordance with the word of God. Only then, when you're no more a stranger to the grace of God, you're no more a stranger to the salvation of the Lord, only then can you come and offer what you have unto the Lord. Look at that verse 25 again. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them, and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 1. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1, Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep, wherein is blemish. Thou shalt not offer to the Lord, sacrifice to the Lord, anything, any bullock, any sheep, any animal, any gift, whatever, has a blemish or any ill favoredness. But that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. That tells us then, if the Lord is going to accept our sacrifice, I pray the Lord will accept your sacrifice. That first of all, we go to Calvary. And we visit Calvary, we repent of our sins. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are taken away. We are born again. We are children of God. And then because we are cleansed and purified by the blood of the Lamb, then we can come and say, Lord, in appreciation for the mercy and the favor that was shown unto me, I come to offer this unto you. We are looking at Psalm 50. Psalm 50, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my what? Saints. You have not opened your Bible, I caught you. That's why I sometimes ask you the next word. If you have not opened the Bible, then I will know you'll be very quiet. Psalm 50, verse 5. Everybody open your Bible. Are you there now? Now, we're going, I'm going to test you. Gather my, my saints, my saints. You see, those are the people that have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And the favor of God and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God has come to them. And the Lord said, I'm interested in those people. They're my children, holy children of God, faithful children of God, obedient children of God. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let's see something now. It's surprising. Verse 16. Watch unto the wicked. God said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Think about that. God said in verse 5, Gather them together. My saints, the people who are cleansed. The people are washed, and the people who are found to me acceptable sacrifice. And then now, some people also, they want to be with those saints, but their sins have not been taken away. They also, they say, I also have something to offer. I also have something to give. In fact, I love the word of God. I want to declare the statutes of the Lord. And the Lord said in verse 16, but unto the wicked God says, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction. To see that a real child of God loves instruction. A real child of God loves to be told how to love God more, how to serve God more. How to be faithful to God, how to walk in the way of righteousness. A child of God will love that. But the wicked, the sinners, they hate instruction. All they want is the goody goody. All they want is a blessing. All they want is a sweet. All they want is a miracle. But the real child of God loves instruction. And these people who are not children of God, they're sinners. They're the wicked. And when God said, gather my saints together unto me, then they wanted to gather and offer sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Lord said in verse 17, See, thou hatest instruction, and castest my word behind thee. When thou sawest his seed, then thou con consent consented with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers, Thou gavest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue framed deceit. Thou seated and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But 
I will reprove thee and search them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. That tells us then, as we want to talk, as we're talking about consecration, and we're talking about absolute surrender. This especially for the children of God. And if you're a child of God, I rejoice with you. I said I rejoice with you. The Lord will accept your sacrifice. The Lord will accept your offering, what you bring unto the Lord. I'm looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Here the Lord is saying, yes, you will sacrifice, yes, you will offer unto me. If I'm going to accept it, there will be no murmuring and complaining. You know, there are some people, we have to do this again. We have to offer this again. We have to give this again. They are calling us again. And we have to come and surrender something to the Lord again. God says, keep what you have. Is not interested in the gift, in the offering, in the sacrifice, in the service of the people that murmur. If we're going to give something to the Lord, acceptable to the Lord. See what Jesus did for us. He gave his life without murmuring. And he gave his blood, his very blood. He died on the cross without complaining. He knew he was going to do this. He went, he went to the cross joyfully knowing that he was going to pay for the salvation of the whole of humanity. He wasn't grumbling, why do I have to do this? He wasn't murmuring, why do I have to do this? And he wasn't kind of complaining to God, why do I have to do this? He did it willingly. If the Lord has given his life for you, for me, for us, willingly, cheerfully wholeheartedly he said in the bottom of the books it is reaching of me lo i come to do thy will O god if the lord jesus said that and he sacrificed himself joyfully cheerfully happily and willingly then we cheer when we come and we come to offer ourselves unto the lord we do it cheerfully and willingly do all things without murmurings and without disputings that she may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labor in vain we will not labor in vain we will not run in vain the lord has called us and the lord has shown mercy unto us we're going to reciprocate and we're going to thank the lord with our gifts and our sacrifice consecrating our lives to the lord our talents to the lord and we're going to receive the reward in jesus name second corinthians chapter 8 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. First of all, they gave themselves to the Lord. Have, have you ever done that? You know, we can do it in a general way. I'm talking about being very specific. Being very specific. And there are, I've read about people that have done it in a very specific way. You know, somebody before he got converted, he used to write a lot. And he used to write novels and books and letters, a lot of things. And then he became converted. He knew that some of the things he had written, that they were not edifying, that they will pollute the young lives of our youth. And now when he became converted, he prayed specially, said, Lord, this hand, very skillful in writing, I come to present it unto you. It will write from now on, the only thing that is acceptable unto you, edifying to the people around me. 
I've heard of another person. He used to watch a lot of cinema. In those days, uh, there wasn't too much of television. It was cinema at that time. And every night, he will go to this and go to that and watch all those dirty, dirty films. Then he became converted. And he knew that he needed to consecrate specifically. And then he brought his eyes before the Lord. He said, Lord, I've seen a lot that came in through this window, that is through these eyes, and it polluted my mind, and it made me feel dirty. Now I consecrate my eyes unto you. I will only look at things that will bring glory unto you. I've read of other people that used to walk about a lot, walk about a lot. They walk here and walk here and walk everywhere. But then they became converted. And in a very specific way, they consecrated their feet unto the Lord. Shouldn't we learn from those our brothers and sisters who have done that, that you come before the Lord and you commit yourself, your very body, and say, Lord, from now on, this is my mouth, I consecrate unto you. I would only speak things that will lift up other people, edify the body of Christ, and show the way of salvation unto sinners around me. Things that will make other people happy. Things that will make other people joyful. Things that will make other people feel like wanting to live a good life. I consecrate my mouth. I consecrate my ears. I consecrate my brain. I consecrate my mind. I consecrate my hands. I consecrate my feet. I consecrate every part of my body. It will only be employed in things that will bring glory unto you. That's what he did. That's what he did in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5. This they did. Not as we hold. Paul the apostle said, they even went beyond our expectation, our hope. First, they gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us unto us by the will of god that's real service unto the lord i pray god will help you i say god will help you that you become so giving unto the lord and let me show you another verse of scripture in first corinthians chapter 16 first corinthians chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 15 i beseech you brethren you know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. And that word, addict, I'm sure you've heard that word before, but in a negative way. There's some people that are addicted to hard drugs, and uh, that's illegitimate, that's not right, that's not good. But they have been taking those drugs, they become so used to it that their bodies will crave it. They just want it. And yet it's not good for them. But they are addicted. Other people are alcoholics. They are addicted to alcohol. Other people are addicted to other things. But these people, they took that word which other people employ negatively and they now brushed it up and cleansed it and now they use it in their own life in a positive way. They said, we're going to addict ourselves, abandon ourselves, commit ourselves in an irreversible manner unto the ministry of the saints. That's what the Lord is expecting from you and from me. We'll do it in Jesus' name. Number one, blameless and acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. Number two, blessed and absolute surrender to the Lord. Blessed and absolute surrender unto the Lord. You know, if uh, you really trust the Lord, you'll be able to give yourself absolutely to the Lord. There will be consecration without looking back, without making a kind of alternative arrangement. You will not say, well, I will follow the Lord at this time. I will give myself to the Lord at this time. But if situations become rough, if situation becomes unpredictable, and if I cannot manage myself anymore, then I'm going to withdraw what I've given to the Lord. And then have it, give it another, another personality or to another, in another direction. 
that person does not know God very well. God is no man's debtor. Whatever you give to the Lord, he will give you a hundredfold of it in Jesus' name. Blessed and absolute surrender unto the Lord. Let me show you an example in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow. That means she made a consecration. That means she gave something to the Lord. Listen now, listen now. She had not got the child yet. She had not received it yet. And yet she is offering it unto the Lord. And she had no child. This is Anna. And she had been thinking and desiring and dreaming and wanting to have a child. And the child was not there yet. And yet she said, Oh Lord, I'm going to commit this unto you. It's like somebody who doesn't have a job yet. And doesn't earn any salary yet. And he's praying and he said, Lord, I've heard about consecration tonight. I've heard about absolute surrender tonight. I wish I had money. And I will offer everything unto you. Alright, I don't have, but Lord, when I have, I consecrate it unto you ahead of time. I hear some of these preachers, and then they quote the Bible, they preach here and there, oh Lord, I'm a newcomer. I'm just here. And when I see those people, like our brother in the afternoon, answering questions, oh, I want to know the Bible. Lord, I don't know the Bible yet, but Lord, if you can give me the intelligence to study the Bible, I know the Bible like these people, I offer my voice unto you. Maybe you are there in the congregation as you saw those instrumentalists and they, you know, pulling those strings and blowing those trumpets. And then you said, this is wonderful. I never had any music like this in my life. Lord, I, I wish I knew music. All right, I don't know music, but Lord, before I know it, I'm going to offer my voice and talent unto you. Don't wait until you have, before you offer it to the Lord, before you have it. That's the glory of real surrender, of absolute surrender unto the Lord. Some people, they wait too late and they wait too long. They say, well, I don't have anything now. I don't want to pray now about giving this to God and giving this to God. How can a poor man, a penniless man, a man that has nothing, how can he offer anything to the Lord? Come and offer it before you have it and God will bless you. I said, God will bless you. Look at verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid and will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord and there shall no razor come upon his head. I'm sure you know what um, Anna had gone through. Benina had been really clean her. And then she will cry and cry and cry. A person like that, you'll think, if you have a child, then you hold on to that child, you'll embrace that child, you will keep that child, you not want that child to go anywhere, but not Anna. Anna said, I don't have yet, but when I have, I'm going to offer him unto the Lord. And thank God for Samuel himself. When Samuel was born, mommy said, Samuel, you know what? I've offered you to the Lord before you were even conceived. And Samuel said, Mama, that's all right. I accept. And both mother and child, they carried out the vow, the consecration, absolute surrender unto the Lord. And Anna gave that child totally unto the Lord. And the Lord blessed her and the Lord will bless you. I said, the Lord will bless you. Because when you give to the Lord like that, He will multiply what you give. And then He will give a lot of other things unto you. I'm reading chapter 2 of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 20 and verse 21. And Eli blessed Elkanah. 
and his wife that's Anna and said the Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord when she brought Samuel to the house of the Lord and said I opened my mouth to the Lord I promised the Lord I'm going to give this child unto the Lord I've come to give the child and then Eli blessed her and they went unto their own home verse 21 and the Lord visited Anna the Lord will visit you so that she conceived and bear how many sons three sons and how many daughters two daughters how many children all together five she gave one child to the Lord and the Lord gave her back five children and a child Samuel grew before the Lord there is blessing when you give something to the Lord absolutely you know the heart of a of a mother when yearn upon an only child upon such a gifted child upon such an obedient child upon such a child that brought joy into our life and yet even though Samuel brought joy into the heart into the life of Anna she gave that child unto the Lord and then the Lord blessed her we're looking at numbers chapter 3 numbers chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 11 numbers 3 verse 11 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying and I behold I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel therefore the Levites shall be mine see that that's absolute surrender the Lord said, that's what I want. I want the Levites. Why did he want the Levites? Because when the children of Israel backslid, and Moses came to them, Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? And these Levites were the people that said, we're sorry for what had happened. We're sorry for the calf, the golden calf, that Aaron raised up. But now we turn away from all that and we turn unto the Lord. And God said, because you have turned unto me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, I possess you. I take you for myself. Behold, in verse 13, all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed, I separated, I dedicated unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am the Lord. When the Lord claims you, you better respond immediately because there is blessing in absolute surrender unto the Lord. I pray we'll obey the Lord in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. First Corinthians, first Chronicles, first Chronicles. Chapter 29, First Chronicles chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and all that's in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. This tells us everything you see on earth, everything belongs to the Lord. You belong to the Lord. Even those sinners by creation, they belong to the Lord. And when the Lord says, come and offer yourself and give yourself unto me, that's a normal thing. Because he possesses you, he has redeemed you, he has purchased you. The word purchase or redeem actually means he has bought you with a great price. And because you are bought, you are purchased, you are redeemed, you belong to him. In verse 12, both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. 
and in thy hand is power and might and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all if you are great praise the lord that came from god if you are rich, praise the Lord that came from the Almighty God in verse 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all that all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. Of thine own have we given thee. And there are some people, if they don't uh, really know the Lord properly, if their salvation is not very firm and very solid, and if the grace of God is not really embedded in them seriously, when they hear about, we want to give a tenth of what we have unto the Lord, they say, what? The whole tens? Ten percent of what we have offered that unto the Lord? But David said, of thine own, have we given thee that one tens, even the nine tens remaining also still belongs to the Lord. And if the Lord is so kind and so good and generous that he says, you can keep nine parts out of ten. And just give me one part for the propagation of the gospel. The same gospel that saved you. Now make that gospel available for all the people to be saved. And give one turn. Then you say, how can that be? When the grace of God is real in your life. You'll not be asking questions like that. And I pray from today that grace will be real in your life in Jesus name. We're looking at the next verse, in the next verse, verse 15, for we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth as a shadow, and there is none abiding, O Lord our God, all this tour, that we are prepared to build thee and house, for thine holy name cometh of thine hand. And all, and is all thine own. And that's the understanding we ought to have. And when you have that understanding that we belong to the Lord by creation and by redemption, by salvation, then you know whatever you're offering to the Lord is a very small part of what actually belongs to the Lord. In John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We're looking at verse 6. John 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were. Can you see that? The Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the believers, about the children of God, about those disciples, followers of him. And then he said, Thine they were. You created them. They belong to you. And then it says, And thou gavest them me. You have given them to me. Soul, spirit, and body. Head, brain, and mind. Heart, body, every part. You have given them unto me. And that's why if you realize that you have been given unto the Lord wholeheartedly, completely, not just a part of you, but all of you. That is, uh, the totality of your being, of your soul, of your mind, of your heart, of your strength, of your ability, of your skill, of your possession, of your intelligence. You have been given totally unto the Lord. Then you'll not be grudging the Lord and murmuring and complaining whenever you are, you are told to do this and do that you belong to the Lord. Then we're told in verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. In the, in, the, in the first verse I read, which is in verse 6, it says, They were thine. Thine they were in the past. Now in verse 9, it says, For they 
are thine in the present. That means then every child of God, you're born again, you're saved, you belong to the Lord. They are thine. Absolute surrender means what belongs to the Lord, bring it to the Lord. It's like if, uh, you know, you let maybe something, let's say your Bible, you let it on the chair. Your name is there and it belongs to you. Another person finds it and he sees your name there. What's he to do? If he's a sincere person, an honest person, he'll bring that Bible, he'll bring it to you and he will surrender absolutely. He will not tear one page out of it. He will not take anything out of it. He will surrender the totality of that Bible unto you because it is yours. And the Lord said, they are thine. They belong to the Lord. If you are born again, by salvation, by the grace of God, by the mercies of God, because you are now a child of God, you belong completely, absolutely unto the Lord. And without grudging, without murmuring, without disputing, without argument, you then bring yourself completely unto the Lord. Verse 10, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. It says, they belong to you, therefore they belong to me, and I can send them anywhere to do anything. And they belong to me, therefore they belong unto you. Therefore you can command them and tell them to do whatever is your desire and your will. And they'll be absolutely and completely surrendered unto you. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verses 19 and 20. First Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 19. It says, watch. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? What? Know ye not that it's not only your soul that is saved, not only your heart that is redeemed. It says the totality of the personality of the man, of the woman, if he's born again, he belongs completely unto the Lord. Forget all about uh, this partial surrender, partial consecration. I give my heart to Christ. I give my mind to Christ. I give my soul to the Lord. How about your body? How about your body? Everything belongs to the Lord. The strength you have, the ability you have, the energy you have. You're not going to spend all your energy running after the things of the world. You come to absolutely, absolutely, absolutely surrender completely unto the Lord. In that verse 19, what? Paul exclaimed because he was surprised. He saw those Corinthian believers how they were living their lives. And their lives were like not totally laid upon the altar. And Paul the apostle in his surprise, he exclaimed. And he said, don't you know? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? I'm sure you've seen some of these uh, so-called Christians. And some of them will make different tattoos on their body. And they scratch the body. They might draw a lizard or draw an eagle. Or they might draw a cross or draw something on the body. They just, they, they just uh, kind of they deface themselves. They may put uh, the tattoos on the forehead or in their arm or somewhere else. And if you say, are you born again? Of course I'm born again. Did you do this before you were born again? No, I did it recently. How could you do that? Oh, because I just love those tattoos. You can do that. Did you take permission from the Holy Ghost? Permission? What do you mean? Well, because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, can you just go to another church building and then begin to paint it and make tattoos and make drawings and, and skeletons on that? No, you cannot do that. You cannot do it to your body. 
Some people, if you see what is going on now in the world, they pierce their nose, they pierce their ears, they pierce even their navel, and they pierce almost everywhere. They want to hang some gold and silver things, rings there. If you're a believer, you cannot just do whatever you like with your body. Watch, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Everybody say, ye are not your own. Turn to the person by your side and say, ye are not your own. You cannot do whatever you like with your body. You cannot do whatever you like with your intelligence, your ability. Ye are not your own. Verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That means then everything we have belongs to the Lord. Why? Oh, because he gave himself for us. And because he wasn't a kind of stingy with his life. He gave it all. All his blood. He gave it all. Everything he had for our salvation, for redemption. He gave it all. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse, from verse 14. For the love of God constraineth us. Because with those judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. It says now we are to live only for the Lord, because he died for us, he rose again for our justification for righteousness, for salvation, for sanctification. Because he gave all that to us without grudging, without murmuring, without complaining. We choose to reciprocate. We give ourselves unto the Lord everything we have got for the rest of our lives. In Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. Will a man rob God? The children of Israel, they were robbing God in paying their tithes. But now the Lord is going beyond that in the New Testament. In the New Testament, I just read to you that our body belongs to the Lord. All the knowledge we have inside this body belongs to the Lord. All the training we have inside this body belongs to the Lord. All the intelligence we have inside this body belongs to the Lord. And if the Lord is saying, I need this, I need this. Look at this, for example. This auditorium where we are. And you know, the, the poles you see there, those poles will not come from the factory by themselves. Somebody has to bring the poles here. And we're not just talking about money. Money can buy the poles. It takes somebody to transport the poles here. And then when the poles are transported here, it takes somebody to erect them and put them in place. And then it takes somebody to measure all that. All this roof, it takes somebody to do it. And we're part of the church. And if you have experience in that area, where are you? What are you doing? Because we belong to the Lord. And if you are not giving your time to the Lord, your expertise, your experience, your training, your skill unto the Lord, you are robbing God. Will a man rob God? It's not just tithes and offering. It goes beyond tithes and offering. And then you see all that is going on. Uh, that program you have in your hand, uh, that paper, it took some people to print that. You know, it will not print itself. Somebody has to print it. And if you know how to print, and then you're not offering yourselves so that I can do this, I can do that, we wouldn't know this is a large crowd. How would I know those who are printers there? How would I know those who are into electronics there? How would I know those who are into electricity and all those things there? But it's when you know, this is my skill. 
and I want to offer myself unto the Lord. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he is saying, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. In their own case, that was what they robbed God of. Maybe you are paying your tithes and say, I'm not robbing God, I'm not robbing God. How about all the other things you have that God needs in the house of God? Every other thing you have that God is saying, can't you do this? Can't you do that? Can't you give your time, your talent, your skill, your ability, communication? You know, some people can communicate better than we can do. And they just sit at the back there. Bring out that your communication skill and come and publicize the gospel and proclaim the gospel and preach the gospel to every creature around you. And then it says, I don't want to read verse 9 because it's talking about those children of Israel. It said they were caused. I pray we will not be cursed. I said you will not be cursed. Verse 10, now bring ye all tithes, all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now here we says the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven the windows of heaven I bow to be opened over you and blessings will pour down and miracles will pour down all the needs of your life of your family will be met in Jesus name and he says I'll pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes I will rebuke the devourer for your sake these are the verses we need in this time of economic downturn in this time in this time of recession the Lord is saying if you will obey him at this time and you bring everything that you have your ties and offering, your body, your skill, your mind, and your ability. You bring it to the Lord. The farming that is going all over the world will not reach your house. Will not reach your business. I will not reach you anywhere you are. You'll be having the abundance of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field says the Lord and all nations shall call you what blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land says the Lord of hosts point number three biblical and approved sacrifice to the Lord biblical and approved sacrifice to the Lord the Lord is expecting us that we look at the word of God and see what is scriptural, what is biblical, what we offer unto the Lord. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 12 and verse 13. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, and to walk in all his ways, and to love him. You love God? I said you love God? You love him more in Jesus' name. And to serve the Lord thy God. And to serve the Lord thy God. And to serve the Lord thy God. You know what service is all about? You've been in our Sunday worship service. You've been at this retreat too. You've been born again now. Somebody there is born again for the last five years. What are you doing in the service of the Lord in the church? You've been born again now for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. What are you doing in the service of the Lord in the church? Well, I appreciate the fact that you come to the Bible study every time. You come to the Sunday worship every time. I know you will not miss the revival hour anytime. That's praiseworthy. That's wonderful. We praise the Lord for you on that behalf. But how about serving the Lord? How about serving the Lord? How about doing something that you will say, This is my part in the house of the Lord. From this time, in a very definite, practical, visible, demonstrable way, you will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. There are, 
don't say that you know other people are there already other people are doing it already you know there are things you do that i cannot do there may be things i can do you cannot do it's just like different parts of the body there are things the ear will do the eyes cannot do there are things the mouth will do the eyes cannot do there are things the hands can do the legs cannot do and there are things the tummy the intestines will do and the kidney cannot do you can do something that the rest of us cannot do we can do something that the rest of the people cannot do bring your own part and bring your own contribution of your skill of your ability of your intelligence and of your training bring it to the lord you are born again you are a child of god and the lord is saying you will love the lord if you love him you will serve him in verse 13 to keep the commandments of the lord and his statutes which i command thee this day for thy good the goodness of the lord will come upon you in jesus name we're looking in at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. We're looking at it from verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. It is the reason why some people cannot serve the Lord acceptably. They are not willing to die to self-esteem. They are not willing to die to self-recognition. They are not willing to die to self-exaltation. They are not willing to die to self-assertion. They think too much of who they are, what they have, and they think too much of their prestige. And if, uh, you know, they go to a particular section of the work, and the person who is leading in that section of the work is not as talented as they are, is not as intelligent as they are, is not as experienced as they are, they say, how can this fellow be my leader when he's not as talented, as experienced, as educated as I am? Self is the problem. If we're going to serve the Lord, you know some other people have been there before we came. And those people already, they have been chosen to lead those various sections. And you are just coming. Maybe your own time will come when you will lead any other section. But at this time now, if you will die to self, that's what it takes to serve the Lord. Look at it again in verse 25. Very late, very late, to you. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The Lord is saying, if our service is going to be fruitful, acceptable, profitable in the kingdom, we must die to self. In verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. If we're going to serve the Lord, we must follow the sacrifice of Christ, the example of Christ, the pattern of Christ. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. The honor of the Lord will come upon our lives in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. How to serve the Lord. How to serve the Lord. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you. You think about this, that Paul had not spoken to Timothy. He had not taken permission from Timothy. And he's already promising the Philippians, he's saying, very shortly you'll say, Timothy, I'm going to send him to you. Paul, how could you talk like that so surely, so certainly? Oh, because I know the heart of Timothy. He serves the Lord. And he never thinks about himself. And he is dead to sell. Self-exaltation, self-appreciation. 
and self-glorification, self-gratification, any self-assertion. Timothy had died to that. And therefore Paul, the apostle, could easily say, I trust in the Lord that I will send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. He said that Timothy, he has brought himself under leadership so much that he does it naturally. It has become second nature unto him. Second nature. He just does it as if he's not even expending in any energy at all. He said that is who Timothy is, but you know the proof of him. For uh, that as a son or the father, as a son or the father, and not as a slave with eye service, not as a servant, that when he's happy, then he'll do something great and something good. When he's not happy, when he has something to grind, and when he has something complaining about, and when he has something he's murmuring about, then he'll do a shoddy work. That's not Timothy. He said, you know the proof of him, that as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently. So soon as I shall see how it will go with me, but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. I pray that this same heart of Timothy the Lord will give unto you, that we will serve the Lord wholeheartedly without looking for anything without any ulterior motive in our mind, in our hearts, in our lives, will totally serve the Lord without any reservation. Now the Lord is uh, telling us that if we're going to consecrate, we'll bring everything in us unto the Lord. In Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, and whatsoever ye do, whatsoever ye do, small or great, Momentarily at the retreat or permanently in our local churches, anytime, anywhere, everywhere, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Verse 23. And whatsoever you do, do it how? Actually, put your life into it, put your heart into it. Put everything you've got into it. Don't serve the Lord half-heartedly. Don't serve the Lord sleeping on the work of the Lord whatsoever you do. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord. Ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I pray that today we'll consecrate, commit ourselves totally to the Lord. Our consecration will be acceptable to the Lord in Jesus' name. I need another amen for that. Yeah. We're going to rise up and we're going to offer ourselves unto the Lord. And the blessings of the Lord that follow consecration will follow your life. The blessings of the Lord that follow commitment will follow your life in Jesus' name. Consecration, absolute, total, complete surrender unto the Lord. Let's rise up and offer ourselves to the Lord. First of all, you thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His salvation. Thank God for His grace. Thank God for His redemption. Thank God because your name is in the book of life. That's the reason why we can ever offer anything to the Lord without salvation. What can we offer to the Lord? Nothing. Thank God He has saved you. Through the sacrifice of the Lord, He has saved you. Through the death of Jesus Christ, your sins are taken away. You are now a child of God. You belong to the Lord. Redeemed or chased, bought by the blood of the Lamb. He has put your name in the book of life. He claims you. He says you are my child. I bought you. I purchased you. I redeemed you. I've saved you. Thank the Lord for that. Thank God for His mercy, for His grace, 
for salvation? Where could we have been without salvation? What would we have been doing without his salvation? Without his mercy? Where would we be? Thank him for that salvation, for that mercy, for that forgiveness, for blotting out your sins, for sending Jesus Christ to die for you on the cross of Calvary. For Jesus offering the totality of what he was unto the Lord for our salvation, for our redemption. Thank the Lord for that. What great, great mercy. Rich in mercy, God saved us. Praise the Lord for that. And the Lord offered himself willingly, cheerfully, gladly. The volume of the books is written concerning him. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Thereby he gave himself a sacrifice for your sin. Now you rejoice in that salvation. Reciprocate. Appreciate what the Lord has done for you. And in appreciation and gratitude to what the Lord has done. And you now come to the Lord and you offer yourself, offer yourself unto the Lord. The strength of your youth, the skill of your life, the ability and the energy and the health you have. All the gifts of training and intelligence offer that unto the Lord. Don't rob God. Don't steal from God. Everything in your care, everything in your hand, everything in your life, the Almighty God rightfully possesses. Offer yourself to the Lord. It's because others offered themselves to the Lord unreservedly. That's why you are enjoying the provision of the Lord. Appreciate the gift of God that has brought salvation unto you that has brought the mercy of God unto you if other people have held back what they had the gospel will not have come to you A normal child of God will love God. A normal child of God will serve God. A normal child of God will offer himself completely unto the Lord. Not to offer yourself to the Lord is abnormal. The normal thing, the right thing, the scriptural thing, the expected thing that you offer at life, body, intelligence, skill, ability, experience, training, everything you've got, knowledge, knowledge. At the feet of Christ, you make everything you have available to the Lord to use for His own glory. For the salvation of other people, 
for the expansion of the kingdom of God, for the exaltation of the name of the Lord. Come with what you have, give to the Lord. Your money too, your resources too, your tithes too, and your offerings too. Be everything at the feet of the Lord. Without murmuring, without complaining, without grudging, be a real child of God. Say, Lord, here I come in appreciation of what you've done for me. Because you offered yourself for me. Because you gave yourself for my salvation. Lord, I too, I come. I too, I come. I offer, I give. I leave everything at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ for your glory, for your honor, for the spreading of the gospel anywhere, anytime you call me to do whatever it is you want me to do. Lord, my life is available. I will never say no to my God, to my Christ, my Savior, my Redeemer. Consecration and absolute surrender unto the Lord. Lord, I give myself I pray that your blessing will abide in the suffering of myself unto you and you use this life for the salvation of those who still need to be saved. Don't hold back anything don't deny the almighty God of what rightfully belongs to him show your love show your appreciation give of your very best unto the Lord. Very best unto the Lord. Very best unto the Lord. And the Lord will accept if it's without blemish, without blame, without any pollution, without murmuring, without grumbling, without complaining, the Lord will multiply what you have given. Then he will bless your life. He promises to open the windows of heaven when you give wholeheartedly. Not only money, yes, money, yes, money, and skill, experience, and training, and ability, everything you've got that the kingdom of God needs. He promises that he will reward you abundantly, multiply a hundredfold, give that back unto you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. If the church is still awake, in Jesus' name we pray. Are you surrendering to the Lord tonight? Are you yielding to the Lord tonight? How do you surrender? Why don't you raise up your hand saying, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. My heart, my life, my will, my substance, my cell, my family, everything of God. Lord, I surrender unto you in appreciation for what you have done for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have opened our eyes to see tonight the secret of abundant blessing that when we come and we give you back what rightfully belongs to you, our life, our heart, our spirit, our soul, our skill, our ability, our money, our resources, our wealth, our talent, our body. That Lord, you will reward us back just in appreciation of that surrender. Lord, we bring everything to you tonight. Accept from us in Jesus' name. Lord, we will serve you. Without looking back, we will serve you. Without reservation, we will serve you. Without grumbling, we will serve you. Without murmuring, we will serve you. Without tiredness, we will serve you. Without discouragement, we will serve you. Without holding anything back, we will serve you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray as we plant everything now on the soil of the kingdom, we pray it will grow. It will bring forth fruit. And then you'll bring blessings to the life of all your people in Jesus' name. From our sacrifice, your house will not lag. Your kingdom will not lag. The work of the Lord will not lag. The vineyard will not lag. The missionary field will not lag. Every local church, there will be no lag in Jesus' name. And as you use us to meet the needs in the church, Lord, we pray all the needs in our lives you will meet. All the needs in our lives and families will supply. Your abundance will flow into every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, as you have promised us, open the windows of heaven and shower your blessings upon all your people. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing bring upon your people from now on in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have accepted our sacrifice. And you have also blessed us in return. We pray that all this blessing will become permanent in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Praise the Lord. God bless every one of you.